Okay. A question you might have asked is what happens when you have two planes intersecting? Okay. Can you find the angle of intersection between those two planes? Well, yes, you can. Okay. Now, two planes don't have to intersect, of course. So, for example, you've got a plane here. If this is another plane, if I put that plane parallel to it, they don't intersect, do they? But they're easier to spot. Okay. They're much easier to spot. For example, um, if I had 4x plus 4y minus 7z equals a different number, they're not going to intersect. Okay. Um, but I've tried to do it so I've got two different planes. Okay, so obviously the 7x minus 4y plus 4z is completely different to that one there. And I've given them in Cartesian form because these are easier to do. Now, when two planes intersect, they intersect at a line. Okay, if you think about that. This is one plane, this is another. Where they intersect, no, there's going to be a line that's common to both of them. They're going to intersect in one particular line. Very difficult to draw it. Okay, very difficult to draw it. Okay. So even me, I've been drawing these things for a while now. So that's one plane, for example. If I try and draw another plane, uh, it's kind of getting messy already. And I try and draw, the int they're going to intersect just at one line, okay? So I mean, it's very, very difficult. I've, I've still not mastered the art of drawing planes that are intersecting with each other, okay? But that's kind of, kind of what's happening. You've got to kind of imagine it, really. Um, it's a bit difficult to do so, okay? Um, anyway, what do you do, okay? Scalar product again, all right, and with vectors, okay, you know that the 4, 4, negative 7 is going to be normal to the first plane, 4, 4, negative 7, and normal to the second plane is going to be 7, negative 4, 4. So all you can do really is find the scalar product between the two normals. So let's just do that, okay? So the scalar product between the two normals is going to be what? 28 subtract 16. Subtract 28, that's pretty easy. So that's just going to be negative 16. Okay, oh, another negative number. I don't like negative numbers. Or no, in vectors anyway, because it means that's going to be a, a obtuse angle, isn't it? So it's equal to the cosine of, well, modulus of this first of all. So what's that? 49 plus 16, that's 65. Uh, plus 16, 81. That's handy. 9. Okay. And then this one here is going to be 49, oh, it's the same, isn't it? Same numbers. So 9 times 9, cos theta. Okay, so cos theta, oh, it's quite simple, negative 16 over 81. Okay, so the angle there required is, um, let's put negative 16 divided by 81 first, inverse cosine of that is 101. Okay, now, as I've already mentioned, really, when you work out the angle between two lines, it doesn't matter if it's obtuse or acute, and, um, so I'm going to give the, um, the acute angle. So that's going to be negative, no, negative, 78.6 degrees. Okay, so the acute angle between the normals is 78.6 degrees. Now, what does that mean in terms of the angle between the planes? It's exactly the same. It's that. Why is that? It's because you've got the normal to both planes, okay? This is something that's hard to visualize. It's almost as hard to draw it, so I'm not gonna attempt, because it would just go horribly wrong, okay? But you've gotta satisfy yourself that when you take the perpendicular, the normal, to both planes, and you find the angle between that, that gives you the same as the angle between the planes, okay? If you try and reason it another way, when we did the angle between a line and a plane, we found the angle between the norm and the plane is subtracted from 90. Okay, but when we're doing it twice, effectively, when we've got two normals, there's no need to do the subtraction. The answer is the same. So, very easy. It's probably the easiest thing you've done in a while, okay, if you think about it, okay, because there's not really much to do, is there? Anyway, that's how to find the angle between two planes. Um, I'm not going to give an example how to find the angle between two planes when they're in vector form. Okay, if you just go back to, I think it's the previous example, when you've got a plane in vector form, you can convert it into Cartesian form or you can easily find the normal. Okay, no matter how to find the normal, just go back to the previous example. And you have to do that twice, you have to do it for both equations, but that's the method. You need to find the normal to do it and then the angle to the normals. Okay, okay, what we're going to look at now is intersection between two planes. Okay. We've already seen how to find the angle uh, between two planes. Now we're going to look at 
find the equation of a line uh, where two planes intersect. Okay, so first of all, you assume these planes intersect, okay, otherwise there wouldn't be the question. Find the intersection between the two planes, and they're in Cartesian form. 2x minus 2y minus z equals 2, x minus 3y plus z equals 5. Okay, now it's really like solving when two lines meet. Okay, simultaneous equations. So I'm going to number these equations one and two. But you notice what is difficult, or potentially difficult about this? You've got three unknowns and two simultaneous equations. So you're not going to solve it. Okay, just keep that in mind. You're not going to solve it. You're not going to find the value of x, y, z, which makes sense if you think about it. Okay, the intersection of two planes is not at a point. It's between a line. Okay, so it's like, you know, Here's a good example. My hands are two different planes. I'm just going to make them intersect like that. Okay, can you see? They're kind of intersecting in a line, aren't they? Okay, I've never used that example before. I'm going to use that again. I just, just thought about that. Um, anyway, so you're not going to find a value for x, y, and z. So just bear that in mind. Now, what I'm going to do is try to eliminate one of the variables as quickly as possible. And I think if we add the two equations together, then that will be um, useful, wouldn't it? Because then the z's will cancel. So adding them together, we'd have 3x subtract 5y is equal to 7. Okay, I don't even need to number that because I'm not going to do anything useful with that. Okay? So you have 3x minus 5y equals 7. Okay? What we can now do that is rearrange that to make either y or x the subject. doesn't really matter which one I suppose. Um, so I'll put this into that side. I'm going to have 3x is equal to 5y plus 7. I'll tell you what, because it's better to divide by 3 than divide by 5. Let's make x a subject, shall we? So x equals 5y plus 7 divided by 3. Okay. Now what that gives us, it gives us a linear relationship between x and y, which is what we're looking for. Remember I said we're not going to find the value of x and y. We've got a linear relationship between x and y, but we're not finished, okay? Because this is not just in two dimensions. That would be a straight line in just two dimensions in the xy plane, because z is not involved, is it? Okay, so you've got to find a way of involving z, all right? And the only way of doing that is to substitute this back into one of these equations. Okay, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose that one just because it says x rather than 2x. And if I want to put this in, it's going to be marginally easier to use that one. So I'm going to substitute that into equation 2, all right? So we're going to have x, which is 5y, plus 7 over 3, minus 3y, plus z is equal to 5, okay? And look, we've got another equation in terms of y and z, yeah? Now, you want to rearrange that and make one of them the subject. So before I do, I don't like the 3 though, I'm going to multiply that by 3 to get 5y plus 7 minus 9y plus 3z equals 15. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? And so while I'm simplifying, I'm just going to put the 7 onto that side. So if I subtract 7 from both sides, that will then become 8. That's looking a bit easier still. And then I'm going to do 5y minus 9y, so that will be negative 4y. Okay, so negative 4y. So before I tell you what we're going to do with that, I've just simplified it a little bit. Okay. Well, what are we going to do with that? Okay, is it better to have y as a subject or z as a subject? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that, okay, and then I'm going to tell you. Okay, what is best to have, okay? Because there's no x there, okay, it's better to have y as the subject, because there's no z there as well. Well, let me explain that a different way. Which letter is common to that and that? Y is common to that and that. In other words, there's a y term there and a y term there. So, it's going to be better if I make y the subject in that equation, and it's going to be better if I make y the subject in this equation. You might say, well, why didn't you make y the subject to begin with? Okay, because then I'd have had to have made another letter of the subject. You see, we have to substitute that in first, and then once we see what we've got common, then we decide what to make the subject. Okay, I did tell you it's going to be a confusing one, this one. Okay, um, so look, making y the subject, so we can have 4y is equal to 3z subtract 8. Is that right? Subtract the 8, put the 4 in that side. And so y is equal to 3z subtract 8 all over 4, okay, make y the subject here, uh, what we're going to have, um, let's just do it in a couple of stages, so, so the 3, 
I'm going to, I'll tell you, I don't know why I'm doing that because it's just, it's just there, isn't it? Oh, silly baby. Come on. So if I use this one, I'm going to have 3x subtract 7 over 5. Okay, and that's it. So I've got y equals 3x minus 7 5 and y equals 3z minus 8 over 4. Now, that is what you wanted. Okay, you've got the linear relation. It's a straight line because it's still a linear relationship. So both of these are equations of just two variables, that and that. Okay, but what we've got is we've got a relationship that um, is shown as how each of the dimensions relate to each other. So the y and x coordinate axes, how they relate to each other, and the y and the z. Okay. So effectively, our answer is this and this combined. However, what we traditionally do is we combine them together and write just one single line, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. I'm just going to bob off the working, okay? And I'm going to leave just the answer there and that answer there. Can you think about how we combine these together? And this is what we do. Since y is equal to that and is equal to that, I'm going to write y equals 3x minus 7 over 5 is equal to 3z minus 8 over 4. And you probably thought you'd never see an equation of a straight line in Cartesian form that involves two equal signs. Did you? Well, here you do. Okay. Now, written like that, the only thing is, more traditionally, what we do is we write it in order of x, y, then z. I'm sure you can understand the logic of that. So the y bit in the middle and the x bit here. So 3x minus 7 over 5. Okay, And that would be how better to leave our answer. 3x minus 7 over 5 equals y equals 3z minus 8 over 4. Now you might be asking, can you write a different form of it? Of course you can. You can rearrange that if you want. And you can have x equals something equals something. Or you could have something equals something equals z. Okay, Any one of those would actually do. Because when you solve these, look, we didn't have to. Eliminate the z first, did we? We could have eliminated the x term or the y term. Just found it easy to eliminate the z term first, that's all. So, yeah, that's our answer. Okay, that is our answer. That's the straight line of intersection between two planes, okay? And you thought I was going to stop there, didn't you? No, no, no. What about the vector equation of the line? Okay, what would that be? Because I've just given you a Cartesian equation, which makes sense. You know, you've got Cartesian planes. So give a Cartesian. What if you want a vector equation of the line? Well, this bit is going to tell you how to do that. And it's also going to show you how to convert a Cartesian equation like this into a vector equation. It's kind of exciting, that, isn't it? Here's the technique, okay? And it's one you've got to kind of remember. And when you see the answer, you'll realise why it works, okay? What you do is you start with this, and then you put an additional equals lambda there. You might think, why? Because when you see the answer, you'll see why. Okay? It's basically because of this. Okay? Our answer has got to be the form A plus lambda B, isn't it? Okay, so I'm introducing a lambda there. Okay? And what I'm going to do is this. Okay? I'm going to, first of all, write that off. Okay? And I'm going to write down three different statements. Okay? I'm going to write down that equals lambda, that equals lambda, that equals lambda. Okay? So 3x minus 7 over 5 equals lambda, okay? And I'm going to write down the next one, which is y equals lambda. It's a very easy one, isn't it? That equals that. And then the last one, 3z minus 8 over 4 equals lambda. Can you see where I'm going with this yet? Right, I'm going to make x, y, and z the subject in each of these. y is already the subject, which is why I said it's quite handy. So I make x the subject here. So what does that mean? So you have 5 lambda plus 7, 5 lambda plus 7, and then divide that by 3. That's right, isn't it? 5 lambda plus 7 divided, yeah. And then here you've just got y equals lambda, of course, so I'll write that again, and that's obvious. And here I'm going to make z the subject, so z equals, let's go 4 lambda plus 8, and then divide by 3, okay? That's that. Do you see it yet? Okay, right, so now I'm going to write down what is in vector form. Because this here is basically the vector I need, okay? Where that's the top row, middle row, bottom row, okay? 
So in vector form, okay, I've got for the x coordinate, I've got 5 lambda plus 7 over 3, and for the y coordinate, I've got lambda, and for the z coordinate, I've got 4 lambda plus 8 over 3. Okay, I'll just finish off with the vector form. But we just don't want to leave the answer like that, because that's not the traditional way we leave it. Okay, I'm just showing you basically what the technique is. Okay, so the preferred way of writing it is this, of course. Okay, I'm going to write that 7 over 3, 7 over 3, I'm going to write that as 0, the constant 0, in other words, 0 plus lambda. Okay, uh, let me just put in the plus 0 to make it clearer. I'm going to write 8 over 3. You see it now? Yeah, what have I got left? And I've got the lambda terms there, haven't I? Lambda, 5 over 3. Put the bracket in. Lambda, 1. And lambda, 4 thirds. There we go. Isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely? That's how it's done. That's how you convert from the Cartesian form to that form, which is, which is really, really nice. Okay, so that's, yeah. So whether you want the intersection to be in Cartesian form or vector form, that's what it is. Okay. And you probably thought I was going to stop the video there, didn't you? Yeah, no, no. Why don't we just, because I, I showed you how to do it this way, why don't we go backwards using the same things, okay? Well, working backwards is pretty easy, okay? I'll just take you through it, okay? I'm literally going to work backwards, okay? Suppose your question is this. Here's the vector equation of a line. Convert it into Cartesian form, okay? Well, what you do is you start off by writing x is equal to the top line, y equals the middle line, z equals the bottom line. So here it is, look, x equals the top line, y equals the middle line, z equals the bottom line, okay? It's helpful when you've got fractions to have a common denominator. Well, I'm not going to say essential, but it really, really helps, okay? So if those you know, weren't the same numerator and denominator, if you had, say, 7 over 5, 5 over 3, get a common denominator, okay? Because you want to have the same denominator on the bottom there okay so you first of all write x equals y equals z equals and then what you do you make lambda the subject in each one okay so make lambda the subject here you got that make lambda the subject here you got that make lambda the subject there you got that and then what you do because lambda equals that that and that then you write down that equals that equals that there you go now because it's literally just working backwards okay and i'm going to stop there okay and that is it okay